Good morning. Welcome again to Morning Devotion. And thank you so much for our time together. I'd like us to go back to the book of Matthew today, chapter 12 for our reading. And I want you to notice something that maybe you have skipped over a little bit in your reading today. Beginning with verse 22. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute. Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished. Now look at their, their words when they were astonished. Could this be the son of David? Could this be the Messiah? A miracle opened their mind to the possibilities. A miracle caused them to begin to think in the right direction. Now going down a little bit farther. But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, when the Pharisees heard what these people were saying, that their minds were open, it is only by Beelzebub, referring to the devil, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. Now it's amazing to me how often a miracle opens people's minds to the possibility of the reality of God, of the goodness of God, of the blessings of God. And then religious leaders come along with their little closed-minded theologies and close the minds of people right back up again. Brothers and sisters, two things I want you to see from this. First, the principle, miracles will open people's minds to the reality of the goodness of God. Religious thinking closes their minds to the reality of the goodness of God. But the second thing I want you to see is we need more miracles. Please forgive me, you hear me say that a lot, but we do. Miracles are not just something we believe in. Miracles are something that you and I should experience every day. Sometimes I think in the prosperity that we've achieved as a nation, I miss a few things. In the old days when you got sick, forgive me, we didn't have money to go to the doctor, so we had to pray. And Jesus answered our prayers and he healed us. Now, if we get sick, we have the money. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doctors, and I'm not saying it's a sin to go to the doctor. That's silly. Paul traveled with a doctor. But what I am saying is, maybe we're too quick to run to the medicine cabinet. Maybe we're too quick to run to the doctors. Maybe we should learn to pray for the little things like Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law of a fever, so that when something big faces us and the doctors can't do anything about it, our faith has grown for the headaches, our faith has grown for the stomachs, our faith has grown because of the flu being healed, and now when we face something really serious that the doctors can do nothing about, we don't say that cancer is the big C. Jesus is the big C. He's the Christ. So let's, let's let our faith grow on the little things. And then as miracles happen in our lives, people around us will see the miracles and their minds will open to the reality of a good God.